Welcome to the Milford Board of Selectmen meeting, February 26, 2018. Um, before we get to any of our regular business on the agenda, uh, this is one of our uh, favorite times of year when Commander PTAC from the VFW comes and presents um, our essay winners, one for the Voice of Democracy and one for the Patriots Pen, our two local, our two local celebrities for the evening. So Commander, I'm going to turn it over to you and then obviously um, we'll open it up to the board. I also know that Representative Murray's here with the citation, as well as Mark Reel from Senator Fatman's office. Um, so we're all here for the girls tonight, and we want to turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. The uh, Voice of Democracy and the Patriots Pen are the two Veterans of Foreign War scholarship programs that are run in the schools from grades 6 through 12 and allows the students in those grades to participate in patriotic uh, essays, which this year, I'm happy to say, we had a winner in both contests, one in the Voice of Democracy and one in the Patriots Pen through our district, District 8. And before I go any further, if you'll allow me, Please. I would like to present to you uh, Erin Wheeler. One up there, right? She's our Voice of Democracy winner. And on behalf of District 8, uh, the commander, Blake Gensler, was not able to be here tonight. So he's giving you the award. I'm giving you the award from District 8, which you didn't receive yet. Thank you very much. This is Marilyn Halpin. She is the Patriot Pen winner. And once again, on behalf of District 8 and Commander Gensler, I would like to present you with this award from District 8. Okay. Now that I have uh, introduced the girls, we can go ahead and present the other awards if you'd like. Great. Um, I'm going to open it up to my fellow board members, but I want to just say congratulations and thank you for coming and sharing your experience with us. And uh, I imagine hopefully we can hear a few words from, from, from you ladies without putting you on the spot about your experience. But I'd just like to turn it over to the board first. Bill? I just want to thank you for contributing to something that's bigger than yourselves, uh, that talks about the things, the, the, the values and ideals that we hold dear, and representing your community. I want to say thank you on behalf of the veterans, on behalf of the community, on behalf of everybody that you represent. It's more than just your family, although they're very proud. It's your community that's also proud of you, so thank you. Thank you, Bill. Mike? Um, you're in a unique situation. You're actually sitting here tonight, and you have three former school committee members, uh, and you have two, two current school committee members, and uh, these are the events that make us very, very proud of what we do every single day in the, in the school district is that uh, young people like yourselves get involved, and uh, you do great things. You do great things, and I talk about it all the time. It's not all about grades. It's not all about grades. It's all about who you are and, and where your passion is and what you follow every single day in life. And... Um, you know, thank you. Thank you so much for doing that, uh, what you've done. I ask you to please continue on. Um, you know, I talk about it all the time in the service that uh, men and women give to this great nation. You uh, just can't, uh, can't top it. And for young people like you to get involved and, and do what you did, thank you so, so much. And my recommendation is keep going. Keep going and congratulations. Great job. Thank you. Is, is there anything that either one of you or hopefully both of you, again, without putting you on the spot, would just like to talk about your experience or your essays or anything else that, you, that you'd like to address? Thank you for, like, all the congratulations. It does mean a lot. Um, I thought it was great to just take this opportunity, and I'm very thankful to have had it. And I just thought it was great to see other people who were so engaged in their communities as well, especially getting to the district level. So it was just a really great experience. and. I'm very glad I did it, and I'll definitely continue to be doing it. That's great. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, I really enjoyed the whole experience and, like, really reflecting on, like, the opportunities that we all have every day. And I keep on doing it, and thank you. 
Well, again, welcome. Thank you, ladies. Um, and in addition to everything else, you're two very well-spoken young ladies on top of everything else. So I think we're going to see great things come out of you two, and uh, you're two more young people that we get to see uh, each year that make Milford very proud. So again, thank you. Um, we have a couple. We have citations from the Board of Selectmen. I'd also like to give Representative Murray the opportunity to say a few words if you'd like to, Brian, um, or or issue your citation now, however, whatever you'd like. Um, uh, yeah, sure. You want me to? Sure. Come sure. On up. Coming back home. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to grab a mic if you want. Or <clears throat> I was going to say, you want to sit in your chair? <laughs> no, 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 this is okay. I'm, I'm right here. Bill, Bill's taking good care of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, um, yeah. No, it does feel like uh, home. Um, but uh, yeah, no, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for having me here. And um, you know, I also want to commend uh, Commander PTAC and the VFW. H how long have you been putting this on now? Um, this is the fourth year we've had it. Yes. Every year since we started, thanks to the Milford school system and the teachers in the grades that are running for the Patriots, Penn, and the VOD, we've had someone on the board every year since we started for so, four years. And for four years, we've had somebody at the state final. That, that's wonderful. You know, it's, and it's wonderful, and, and we've talked about this before that uh, you and uh, the VFW have taken this on to really kind of bring this forward for the young people in the community. Um, you know, I really want to thank you for, for that effort. Uh, and also, as was alluded to, really, we really do need to recognize um, the Milford Public Schools for working with you, your teachers, your staff. Um, you know, they want you to succeed. Um, they, they, they want to help you, and clearly they did. And uh, I think their efforts really shown through with, with yours. Um, you know, I think all of us, as, as you know, we watched in, in horror the, the recent events that happened down in Florida at Parkland and, and the aftermath. One thing that really shines through on that is to realize just how powerful and truthful the voices of our young people can be. And I think you are prime examples of that, getting involved, talking about what's happening in our country, uh, the government that we have, issues that we face, um, you know, folks like you have to step forward and really set the record straight, put us on the right course, and, and, and you've done that in your way by, by being part of this essay contest. And I agree with the chairman, uh, this is not the end, this is a start for you. Uh, this is really a beginning and you have so much to look forward to. Um, and I'm certainly proud as a member of the town of Milford for what you did, and I know your families are very proud as well. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm, well, I, you know, I have the citations, sure. and uh, Mark, I know Senator uh, uh, Mark Reel is here also. Okay, no, thank you. Mark, do you want to come on up? Uh, Senator Fatman couldn't make it tonight, but Mark Reel, his constituent director, or, or the district, district director. <laughs> Excuse me, I actually well, knew I'm that. Right. There's, there's two, two things <laughs> Well, it's weird to sit at a neighboring selectman's table. I'm That's right. Selectman. Also a selectman from <laughs> yeah. Mended. Yeah, so. Um, so unfortunately, the senator couldn't be here tonight, but I think he would echo all of the statements made to you this evening, and he would be very proud to be here with you and just know that he sends his congratulations. And I have citations as well, but Thank you. if you want to read them first, you can. To you. Okay. Yeah, feel free. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, these are uh, from the uh, House of Representatives as follows. Be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offer its sincerest congratulations to, uh, to Aaron Wheeler in recognition of your prize winning essay in the Voice of Democracy essay contest sponsored by the VFW Post number 1544, which placed sixth at the state VFW runoff. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. Given this 26th day of February 2018, it's signed Robert A. DeLeo, Speaker of the House, and offered by myself, Brian Murray, your state representative and admirer. And there is also one uh, for, and, and I'm sorry, is it Marin? Yes. Marin, okay, Marin, Marin Halpin. Uh, when we first did it, I thought I had a typo on your name, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a very unusual and pretty name. 
And this is in recognition of your prize-winning essay in the Patriots Pen Essay Contest sponsored by VFW Post 1544, which placed fifth at the state VFW runoff. Congratulations, Steve. Thank Oak. you. May I say one thing? Uh, there were 13 seats up there on the stage. Out of a possible 12 to 1,500 essay entrants, they were in the top 13 of the state. Wonderful. Okay, and here I have from the State Senate an official citation which reads, be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby <laughs> extends its congratulations to Erin Wheeler in recognition of winning the VFW's Voice of Democracy Essay Award, and be it further known that the Massachusetts Senate extends its best wishes for continued success, and that this citation be duly signed by the President of the Senate and attested to and a copy thereof transmitted by the clerk. And it is, again, signed by the President of the Senate and your State Senator Ryan Fatman. And the, uh, for Marin, it says the same thing. Be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to Marin Halpin in recognition of winning the VFW's Patriot Pen Essay Award. Be it further known, the Massachusetts Senate extends its best wishes for continued success and the citation be duly signed by the President of the Senate and attested a copy thereof transmitted by the clerk. Congratulations. And last but not least, mm -hmm. be it known that the Board of Selectmen hereby offer their congratulations to Marin Halpin in recognition of receiving the Patriots Pen Award for your essay, America's Gift to My Generation. On behalf of the people of Milford, the Selectmen extend their very best wishes and express the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors given this 26th day of February 2018. Signed by Michael K. Walsh, William D. Buckley, and Will Kinky. Be it known that the Board of Selectmen hereby offer their congratulations to Erin Wheeler in recognition of receiving the Voice of Democracy Award for your essay, American History, Our Hope for the Future. On behalf of the people of Milford, the Selectmen extend their very best wishes and express the hope for, for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. Given this 26th day of February 2018, again, also signed by Michael K. Walsh, William D. Buckley, and Will Kincaid. Congratulations. <laughs> Gentlemen, is it possible if we do a, a little recess, we could get a photo? All right, great. Dan, can we take a recess and we'll return back to regular session after we get these young ladies in the local papers? <laughs> Thank you. Welcome back uh, to the Milford Board of Selectmen meeting, February 26. We had a brief recess. We're now going to the signing of the warrant. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll move that we uh, sign that warrant. And I would second that, Mr. Chairman. And I'll also vote in the affirmative and make that unanimous. We have approval of the February 12th meetings for the regular session. I'll move, Mr. Chairman. I would second that, Mr. Chairman. I'll also vote in favor, and that's unanimous. We also have executive session meetings for February 12th. Moved. Second. I'll also vote in favor and make that unanimous. Next, uh, we're going to go off schedule or off agenda here and invite Ray Ozier up. Oh, and Joe Callery. All right. Welcome, Joe. Double package. <laughs> Us. No, not a problem. Uh, just so you know, uh, Ray reached out to me and wanted to, uh, we couldn't get him on the agenda for this meeting, so rather than waiting for two more meetings, he was going to come during invitation to speak and present something that's on his mind and that he's been working on for a little bit. Yep, Mr. Callery and myself would love to organize a 4th of July parade. Yes. And we want to make it easy and pretty much mirror the Santa parade. Same route, um, same... Same, same idea. Same idea. You know, just, just have less clothing, I guess. Type mm -hmm. deal. Um, we figured you always have all the other parades, the Memorial Day parade, Santa parade. But I remember growing up around here, we wanted, always went to the parade. It was mm -hmm. always the Fourth of July parade. There was always something. I know we always talk about it, but I talked to Ray about it, and he was on board. So we figured we'd try to work this ourselves, and we're just really yeah. looking for your support. Like to build a new tradition for Milford. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's a 
my my first instinct is that that's a great idea. I know offline we both were able to, you know, you guys uh, certainly shared that idea with me. Um, I think anytime we can celebrate something here in Milford, especially when you two gentlemen are involved in a lot of other festivities in town, whether it's the Santa Parade or the the music social. And again, Ray, I can't thank you enough for even putting local music on the scene here with the help of a lot of your friends and everything. And Joe, I know you're involved with that too. And I just, you know, that I wanted to make sure that that people are aware of everything that you go, that you do behind the scenes, um, and 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 in front, quite honestly. But uh, we also hear you on the radio every day, and I think uh, my FM is also lucky to have you, and in turn we are as well. That's that. So, made me cry. No, no, you, you, do, you do a lot of work, and again, this is stuff that we're constantly talking about over the last few years. Quality of life issues, Milford Pride. This is the stuff we're proud of. This is the stuff that we need people to 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 come to the forefront and talk about. Joey so, and I have young kids, as many of us do, and we'd really like them to. To grow up and I mean not that it's not a wonderful town as it is but we know Even it better. can be better and I think uh, we want to work harder from this point on yep. to make sure that our kids grow up in a town that they can be proud of as well might not be the best one the first round but yeah we're gonna try our best to get it bigger and bigger and bigger every year no, too, but so. it can only grow I mean I'm gonna turn it obviously over to the board too um, generally during invitation to speak we listen and go but I think this is something again that you know if there's if there's any uh, comments or, or concerns that we should start here because obviously there's work for you folks to be done. I'd like to get some rough idea of, of whether the board is supportive of this and then you obviously can go and work with the, the logistics, the things that we need to approve um, yep. and then and, and go from there. Bill? Yeah, I, I can think of no better reason to celebrate than the birth of our nation so why not? Um, uh, you know, I, I, I would uh, make all the resources available from our office uh, that we can and help to coordinate if there's anything that you need in terms of contact with individuals that would involve police fire you know the the, the folks that uh, veterans if veterans are interested Absolutely. right they're they're why we're here tonight that's right uh, but thank you I, I you know one of the things I want to make sure I say is thank you for bringing this forward because if if not for some citizen actions and citizen activity uh, it's not always going to be government that uh, that organizes or uh, coordinates things. And so I want to thank you on behalf of the community, both of you, uh, for uh, bringing this idea forward, bringing it back. And uh, again, you know, if we can't celebrate the birth of our country, then I don't know, you know what we would celebrate. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Bill and Mike. Um, interesting that the both of you are here this evening. I've had a couple of people reach out to me recently and asked if possible, and I was not aware of this, that this year, uh, the symphony doesn't play at the 4th of July fireworks anymore. Right. And uh, they said it would be, be really so nice if you could get the symphony back to the 4th of July celebration um, for the music, just like at the Hatch Hill in Boston. So for you two gentlemen to come before us tonight and now say you want to you have a parade, outstanding, outstanding. And I think in the future we see this building into a, um, a celebration after a parade. Right. Um, you know, spilling out into a field, whether it's plains yeah. or wherever, and then having an afternoon of yeah. festivities where something like that could occur. Yeah, and again I speak about it is that when you, when the three of us walk in parades or three of us are standing by the Santa Parade at Town Hall as it's going by, as an elected official it gives you so much pride. Because you, you, you feel like you're representing a community where people are engaged. And, um, and this is a community where people are engaged. We just saw a presentation earlier to two young girls. Right. Um, it's a great, great community. I support you 100%. I'll help you in any way that I can. Um, but you know what? It's just going to make the 4th of July a, 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 just a great day. And, and to Selectman Buckley's point, there's no better way than celebrate the birth of our nation than to get everybody involved everybody involved so thank you thank you 100 percent thank you like we said we've been toying with this for quite some time you know yeah, we missed last year schedule yeah so. we, we wanted to do last year but we didn't so that's we, all right my schedule his schedule it's impossible yeah. so we just now we're going for the going for it and see what we can do i think one of the biggest things we need from you guys is um qualifying this as a town event mm -hmm. to save a little money here and there yep. mm -hmm. um so if if we can get your support in that aspect and have the town's support 
as a town event, and we will work for you to put this right. event on. Okay. I think for tonight, since you, you came during invitation to speak, sure. what we'll do is, obviously, I think you know that all three of us are very supportive yeah. of it. Yep. So I think, you know, going forward at your next steps, I think that we can officially put you on the agenda, right. and then anything logistically we can start to, you know, uh, check off the list one by one, we'll certainly do that. <clears throat> Fantastic. Right. Cool. Appreciate your time. Thank you, John. Right. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. In the meantime, work with our office and Rick. Yes. Uh, good to see you. Joey, good to see you. Thank you very much. Mr. Walsh, thank you. Good to see you, Ray. Right. Good to see you again. Soon. Take care. No good problem. Ray, right. how you doing? Thank you. Good. Reach out. We've we, we, we got some ideas. All right. Thank okay? You. First public hearing and scheduled appointments is with our benefits coordinator regarding insurance rates. Kelly? And this is discussed the group health, dental, and life insurance rates for our renewal date, which is May 1. Correct. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And gentlemen, this is um, Brian Boyle, Jr., a health care consultant. Hi. Welcome back. Nice to see you all. Um, unfortunately, I don't have celebratory stuff to discuss, um, but it's not bad news. It's just not as interesting as the previous speakers. Okay. I was going to say, if the rates are down, you do have something to no, celebrate. No, no, no it's just, <laughs> Uh, just doesn't seem to be the theme of the evening. But. Well, we know that if people are, prepare, are uh, um, contributing to that 4th of July celebration, they'll be insured as a result of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I think we had a relative, you know, we had a relatively uneventful um, renewal process this year. We had a relatively um, good rate come from the health insurance company of 5.2%. We were pretty pleased with that. And... Um, our dental plan has gone up 2.5%, which we're still lower than our 2016 rate. And Boston Mutual has um, offered us a zero or no rate increase this year. So, And that's the third year in a row, right? I believe it's the third year in a row now. Um, so I'm here tonight looking for a vote. Um, these, are, these rates were voted upon by the Insurance Advisory Committee. Okay. And I'm um, just looking to, looking or approval of the rates. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, take the advice of the Insurance Advisory Committee and uh, for the benefits uh, effective May 1st, 2018, the Blue Cross Blue Shield reflecting a 5.2% increase, Delta Dental uh, representing a 2.5% increase, and Boston Mutual Life uh, representing a premium rate that uh, is uh, consistent with last year. Mr. Chairman, if I may, before I second that motion, Kelly, I just want to say thank you. A lot of people don't realize what your department does on a daily basis for all the employees of this community. So I just want to say thank you. Great job. It's a very important role to all the employees of this community. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll second that motion. And I will also vote in favor and make that unanimous. And coincidentally, driving over here, uh, prior to driving over here, listening to the news, uh, the federal numbers were at 16.5% increase for um, for the federally subsidized care Ouch. coming here. So it's just, I know. So when I going up, I understand how you present it, up, but it's only, just, it's 5%. So. It, yeah. Knowing what some of the others, other increases we've been hearing, it was yeah. relatively good news. So mm -hmm. great. Well, great. thank you. Thank very Thank you much. again. And thank, thank the you. IEC for thank us. You. Please. We'll do. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good Have night. night. Brian, take care. Next scheduled appointment is uh, Mike Dean, our town engineer regarding Enron Power and the Charles River Watershed. And he has Julie Wood with him, Director of Projects for the Charles River Watershed. How are you? Good. Hi. Okay. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm doing all right. That's good. Okay, as you just mentioned, Mike Dean, town engineer. We're here with Julie Wood from Charles River Watershed Association. And we're here tonight to discuss an opportunity that has presented itself from CRWA. CRWA, as most people know, they work on improving the water quality of Charles River and some other waters in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So through their efforts, they have secured funding in the amount of $200,000 to be used towards stormwater management projects. Um, let's see, so these funds also a result of negotiations between CRWA and Milford Power LLC, which is the power plant down at the end of National Street. Okay. So 
So I'm assuming they chose to work with the town of Milford because the power plant is in the town of Milford. <laughs> so of the $200,000, $50,000 will be towards design work, dealing with watersheds and design, stormwater management regulations, things of that nature. And $150,000 will be towards constructing the actual infrastructure and or implementing some best management practices or BMPs. All of, all of this work will complement the EPA's stormwater management regulations, the good old MS4 permit. So I'm here to convey the fact that I think this is a good opportunity for one, to create a working relationship with the CRWA, okay. and obviously to take advantage and utilize $200,000 to best, to better the stormwater system of the town of Milford. Okay. So with that, I turn it over to Julie, and if she has anything else to add, and if not, yeah, we can answer some questions. <laughs> Julie, is there anything you'd like to add? <clears throat> sure. Um, I would like to um, echo that we're excited to possibly partner with Milford. We have a lot of partnerships with with 35 cities and towns in the um, in the Charles River watershed, either all or part in the watershed, um, and a lot of the stormwater management decisions. Really, all the stormwater management decisions happen at the local level. So we really like engaging with the communities. Um, we haven't had a chance to work with Milford um, recently, or um, more than recently, I guess, as long as I've been at CRWA, <laughs> which is 10 years. So um, we're excited um, that we do have this opportunity. Um, and so what we're you know, putting forward to the town and hoping you guys um, would agree with is um, of the 200,000, we can use 50,000 to do some planning, um, sort of identify good opportunities to treat stormwater, good opportunities to maybe infiltrate stormwater. Um, so that would sort of be the first step, look at a particular area, um, identify good opportunities with the goal of, as Mike referred to, helping to mitigate some of the increased water use that will be happening at the power plant as they're expanding their capacity there. Um, so obviously they're a big water user and they take water from the river and the treatment plant and the um, water company. So we'd like to mitigate some of those impacts, um, but first we need to figure out the best way to do that. Um, and then we would have money to um, construct something and the idea would be to also use some of that money that we're getting through this agreement um, to possibly leverage some state funds. Um, so that might be sort of a next step because um, there are some state grants for doing stormwater construction projects um, that are available but communities have to put up a, lo a local or non-federal match. So it, it may, having that money may actually allow the town to leverage some Great. more. Right, and that was one of my first questions was, well, if we join this effort, how much money do we have to come up with? So I don't, they haven't, uh, CRWA hasn't portrayed that we have to go and, and acquire or put up a lot of money to do this as well. It's just, if it ends up being that way, knowing that we have to start implementing best management practices and this infrastructure for the EPA, then so be it, but we don't necessarily have to acquire or put an article forward to go grab 150 just because we're working with the CRWA. So that was one of my concerns up front, and it hasn't been conveyed that we have to do that. If we decide to go forward with the grant and seek a grant, this can be combined with $150,000. So if we seek uh, all additional monies, now we have a potential $300,000 project, things of that nature. But if that doesn't move forward, then we can still just utilize the $150,000. Great. Any questions? So fifty thousand is for planning. Hundred. Um, I'm sorry. Hundred and fifty thousand is for uh, submissions to grants or actual work. Actual construction. Actual construction of the infrastructure. I'm sorry. Okay. Of the infrastructure. These best management practices. The okay. pension basins. Things of that nature. And at this point, there's no request for matching funds or anything from the town at this point. That's my understanding. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think uh, we should be able to put together an agreement with uh, Charles River Watershed Association passed by town council and uh, outlining the things that, uh, you know, so that we can make it formal. Um, but for the purposes of tonight's discussion, you know, I can't think of a reason why we wouldn't want to be 
you know, working with Charles River Watershed Association on this work. We know that the EPA's MS4 permits and requirements are coming down. We don't know all of the details yet because there's uh, been some delay. We don't know if the DEP will be acting on behalf of the EPA. Uh, that still remains uh, uncertain, but uh, uh, or at least the last I heard. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm encouraged by this, and it makes sense. Great. Thanks, Bill. Mike? I, I think what's important about tonight is that um, from the sidelines, when you listen to the news and you watch everything that's been discussed about stormwater management in the past, it seems like everybody's got their own agenda. Nobody's really communicating. So to have something like this come before us where you're actively now, you know, working together, you know, through a grant, um, but there's communication, there's communication. And through communication, things can only get stronger, you know. And I think it's the first time personally for myself that I've seen since stormwater management's come out that a group has come together and said, we want to work together. It's a joint effort. Yeah. yeah, well, a joint effort. We, you know, we understand it's coming, and, you know, we want to we wanna work together to, to make it what it needs to be. So I, you know, I commend you for that, both of you, and uh, I agree. Yep, I would move forward with it. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Now, I imagine you are going to want a vote taken tonight uh, to formalize the agreement, or are we at that stage? No, we're not at the okay. stage. Okay. This of is just a preliminary. Okay. This is just to present the opportunity that's in front of us and make sure, making sure that we should or can. Thank you. Forward. Thank okay. you for keeping us in the loop and yeah, right. keeping us in front of it. Thank you, Mike. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. Thank you. Thank you very Take much. Take care now. Is there a reason, does your town administ administrator's report have anything that would affect um, Kevin and his group coming up first? Or uh, No, it does not. Okay. Well, then I will go out of order and ask uh, Kevin Lobeser uh, regarding the middle school <coughs> and his attorney, Joanne Tanellis, to come forward. Good evening. Good evening. How are you all tonight? Good. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Kevin, welcome back. We're good. How are you? We're fine. <laughs> Excited to be here. So aren't we. Also, <laughs> so great. I'll let Kevin do the uh, campus stuff, and I'll do the administrative stuff. Thanks, Joe. Is that your hat? Yes. Okay. Well, sit there. I don't know. I know. I thought maybe you left him there as an advertisement or something. Uh, what were some building hats all over? <coughs> there. Rob stickers. Oh, um, I know that you know. Primarily, you were here tonight to talk about the moving forward on the on the purchase and sales agreement for the sale of the middle school <coughs> lease property. But hmm. we thought we'd take just a moment, if if you could, to also bring you up to date on where we are about moving forward with a rezoning article that will allow for the rehabilitation of this property. Obviously, it's my understanding that not only did the town want to sell the property, but the town wanted to see this property reused in a meaningful way as soon as possible. So Kevin has uh, agreed to purchase the building, and uh, I think you've agreed to sell it to him. And he has taken the efforts early on to show you an architectural rendering of what he intends the middle school east to look like for the rest of Milford's future. And I, I think you can see that there's been a significant amount of effort placed into the architectural. Obviously, from the standpoint for, for Kevin, the, the building will be used for a single purpose, and that will be residential apartments. And it is our understanding at this point that those apartments will be set aside for people who are 55 years of age and older. Um, I've talked to Kevin about this specifically and I think that an over 55 apartment building 
in downtown Milford is going to be actually probably closer to an over 70-year-old apartment building <laughs> because I think that, you know, basically people are just staying younger and being more active. But we see this, and Kevin sees this, as a transitional building for people who want to sell their homes and stay in Milford. And so you see what the building will look like from Main Street. Kevin has gone out of his way to preserve the original structure, which was built you know, for St. Mary's Parish at that time. The building that I'm most fond of, which is the gym, because that's where I played high school basketball. <laughs> uh, not so much the cafeteria. We didn't use the cafeteria at Wolfen High School, just the gym. Um, that is going to come down. So the gym building and the cafeteria building will be raised. Uh, there's a significant expense in doing that because we're right on the street line. There's going to be a tremendous amount of, of preparation that goes into that. And at the present time, the way Kevin's figured it, he anticipates that he'll be able to get 36 one and two bedroom units in there, a mix of those type of units. I was able to get a, a heads up that the town meeting with warrant was going to be closing soon and uh, <laughs> reacted and asked... Uh, your administrator place a t put a placeholder on a zoning article and then went right to work on preparing a zoning article. And I've spent uh, a considerable time with Larry Duncan, and uh, we have, I think, the meats and bones of an article. We've got to just do a little bit more reworking on the parking configurations and the, and the requirement for parking. This article, which I'm hoping either the Board of Selectmen or the Planning Board will join in the sponsor for, will be for both the CB and CA districts with a little bit of tweaks depending on which district you are. If you're in the CB district, which Kevin is in, we're going to require that the parcel property be a minimum of 1.5 acres. We've looked at the other parcels available and believe that the best way to do this in the future of Milford to use this if this works out is probably for people to marry parcels together to be able to do a project going forward. Once we get into the CA district, which is basically the real downtown, the old, what we all call downtown, where some of the multi-story buildings are, we would again be looking at over 55, but only on the second, third, and fourth floors, retail only on the first floor. In the CB district where Kevin is, we're going to stay away from the retail, and this, but we're not going to prohibit it, but Kevin wants to stay away from it, and I think appropriately so, because this building was never used retail. So it's not like we're taking up retail space and changing it into residential. We're taking another use and converting it solely into residential. So that's basically just the backdrop of where we are. I would venture to say that I'm probably maybe two, three hours of arguing away <laughs> before we get the zoning bylaw worked out. I obviously got to have it, I'll have uh, Jerry vet it and I'll, I'll run it through through Mr. Villani, but very, very close to having it done. I've got a couple of uh, preliminary views of it here, so much to the point that both Larry and I sent emails to each other on Friday that crossed, and when we opened them up, it looked like we had each written each other's bylaw. So I think that's a good sign. I hope you think it's a good sign. So, but that's where we are, and I, I think I've said enough. Kev can talk about his own plans for it, but that gives you a, just an idea of where we are. And again, I think you get a, a good idea of the visualization. We also have a little site plan done, which I passed out, which shows, <coughs> excuse me, how we would configure the property relative to parking. And again, you can see the area that will be uh, the new addition. The parking areas on both summer and winter streets no access directly onto Main Street, so we won't have any new curb cuts coming out. Everything will be on those two side streets. So that's, that's where we are. Very excited about it. I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to work with Kevin on this. I, you know, as you know, I have a, 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 a long affinity for the town of Milford and for the redevelopment, and I'm very excited to be involved in any reclamation project on Main Street. So thanks. Well, great. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. I'm not sure what to add with that, guys, because I, I, I wasn't even sure where we were going for tonight anyway. So, I mean, I, I obviously wanted to take the opportunity to give you guys a full-size look of how we were envisioning the site to be. So I see that in the handouts. And, um, and I know that you guys never saw my vision on the building because, as you know, when I responded to the RFP, that was really just an alternate. And my, you know, I didn't want to even really put those plans in there until I thought that was the flavor of most of the people in town, which... We have met with planning board as well. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there was anybody on the planning board that didn't like the, or love, in my opinion, love the idea. Um, well, I know the planning board has been talking about residential units on Main Street yeah. for some time, so that's why yeah. when you first submitted this that. Yeah. 
by um, by asking for it to go over to planning mm -hmm. um, and zoning and just getting you face time with them to, yeah. to see how it was. They were part of the process from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we put off the vote until tonight. Yeah. Um, and that's what tonight is really, and I know we kind of put you on the spot today, but um, we, you know, the board is, uh, you know, going to decide whether or not to move forward and accept the bid. And yeah. um, I think seeing this, um, this rendition of the building, which is pretty impressive, and again, there's a huge emotional attachment to that building as well. And we've seen that, anyone involved has seen that over the last 20 years on town meeting floor, when it's been <laughs> trying to be used for uh, an addition as a school, when other people in the past talked about raising it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that that looks better than I, than I even thought yeah, it could be. Yeah, I think it's going to look even better, Will. I mean, you know, I know in the RFP it talked about local knowledge, working with the boards, you know, wanting to be in, you know, part of the community, basically. When I went to see the planning board last week, you know, they were all saying, Kevin, you're going to have to have a lot of patience. This could take years to get the zoning and all that stuff. And I said, look, guys, I'm, you know me by now. I want to work this thing out, but that definitely patience is not going to be a word anybody that knows me is going to, you know, deal with. <laughs> not you two. <laughs> well, and truthfully, I mean, ideas. Joe, I didn't talk to Joe until after the planning board right. meeting. And, you know, and I realized that I said, you know, I, I really need someone that really is just as enthusiastic about the downtown area as I am, and I, I don't want to go grab a, you know, a bylaw attorney from Boston or something like that. I mean, I just felt like Joe was the right you know, choice, and I've never even worked with Joe. I mean, I've seen him good at planning board meetings for Very 20 good. years, um, and we had a great meeting the day after the uh, planning board meeting, and on, like Joe said, within, within two days, we felt pretty good about what we were putting together for the uh, bylaw, but I mean, whether or not that's what happens or not. But um, Kevin was in my office the other morning, and I left the meeting with him, went upstairs, and there was a message from Mr. Villani giving me the knowledge about what was going on with the warrant. So all of that happened just on that groundswell. Kind of the, organic and fast, in one, right? In one yeah. day, we went from, whoa, yeah. okay, yeah. boom. Uh, so, and, and when he left, we were talking about the fall town meeting, but he was wishing for the spring town meeting, so it worked out, and we're really, really excited about it. Yeah, I mean, my opinion is the school is not helping anybody just sitting there and no. sitting there and sitting there, so... That's my No, and my you're, you're certainly solving um, that problem as well, because a lot of us, and I sound like a broken record, but who grew up with the Stacy Middle School boarded up for most of their life, yeah. um, we did not need that on Main Street. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. So yeah. this is, yeah. I mean, all around, this is Yeah, I mean, I know, and project. this isn't the time, guys, but I mean, hopefully you can see by the, the drawings there that, I mean, clearly we're trying to pull the building off of Sumner Street, mm -hmm. trying to introduce more of, you know, more of green space around the building. Um, you know, I mean, if you in this part of the building here, that's all brick right now. But obviously, we need windows because there's be units in there. So we're trying to incorporate, you know, the old style windows that actually at one point had all the transoms on the top of the windows that are now pieces of metal to save money when they did their, you know, the redid the windows back in the day. And then obviously, I wanted to make a cool transition from the old to the new. You know, the only way you can blend those, you're never going to get the brick to match. So we'll get something that's close enough, but it will be separated by some kind of a, you know, a different color scheme. Um, and I think the coolest thing, on the, uh, at least in my vision right now, is I mean, obviously we're trying to make this, if you've been to that building, you know that it's different levels, which is one of the biggest problems that you really have there to turn into a full-blown commercial building. So that's the reason why we're doing this retainer wall here, because we're going to bring that all up the grade. When we do the new addition, everything will be get, we'll get everything back onto the same plane, which is very important for us from, from a building standpoint. And if you're familiar with the intersection, which I know you are, <coughs> nice crosswalk right there in the corner. So what, what, what we're definitely going to try to I think in the end, my stairs would be a lot wider than that. That's just was my first rendition. But we want to be able to lead people that you know are living in that building to the crosswalks, obviously. Um, so, and then <coughs> my favorite room is the top room up there because that would be the like the meeting room or the library or the the gathering room, which really has really you know very cool views up there. Because when we, even when we did 21 Main Street, which is significantly lower than this building, when you're up on the roof of that building, there's actually really neat views. So, I just. And then we think about how close this is to the senior center, uh, literally three blocks, three city blocks away, maybe four. Mm -hmm. uh, so on our bus it, route, ex yes. on the bus route, exactly. Um, yeah. Town just, Hall, uh, Dunkin' Donuts, bike trail, yeah. you know, churches, yeah. restaurants. So, think, which is the whole purpose of this. You know, I mean, again, why do you my want foot traffic. I think that my. I don't know if I got that message across to the planning board the other night well enough, but. It has to be one building at a time at some point. Absolutely. And I just said, look, this is the this is going to be the biggest one that you'll be able to 
show off in town. And if this works the way I want it to, I think that uh, people are going to want to have other buildings like this built. No, and if I can just add, I mean, this is you know what, what we're trying to do on one end of town. What you've done at 21 Main Street, yeah. from what an eyesore that whole mm -hmm. group of properties was for a long time. People didn't even know how much land was there. Right. And now you have this in the middle. I mean, we're just again, whether it's one building at a time, one area at a time. Yep. It's not going to happen overnight. But I got to tell you, it's. For some of us who've been, you know, and certainly for the three of us at this board that have been talking about things like this for some time, mm -hmm. it, it, it's happening pretty quick. So. It is, because, I mean, remember the old uh, Gasco gas station on the other end with CVS's? We did that building, and now it's the Milford Hospital's Urgent Care Center. I mean, 20 years ago, we did the old bowling alley and did that right. to the Papaginos and Fresenius. And then um, about a year ago, we tore down the old Robertson's floor covering in Hanson Electric Building, mm -hmm. and we built 308 Main Street, which is now the ear, nose, and throat, and cardiology. So, you know... I'm saying one at a time, but I think we're up to five. Of them you did now. one at a time, but you. Yeah, I did one at a time because <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I had to. <laughs> Kevin, first off, let me say uh, right. thank you. Unbelievable, Un unbelievable. And I had a conversation. I've actually had many conversations with Mr. Villani over the last couple of days, and I said there's nothing worse than sitting at that traffic light. You have this beautiful town hall to your right. Mm -hmm. Thank God the convenience store is going to reopen, mm -hmm. but you had that vacant building. Okay, and then. And I'm a member currently right now, a member of the school committee, but then you look at that building and you just got shades up, shades down. You know, you got windows open, windows closed. Um, I've toured the building. We toured it as a school committee beyond needing work. Yes. Um, and um, to see something like this, and, and I think what's, so, you know, there's a lot of things that are encouraging about this, but I think the thing that sticks out to me is that People in the community have reached out to me and said, well, what are they going to do with the main building? Mm -hmm. Well, here it is, mm -hmm. you know, and it's the same thing that Consigli Construction did. Right. There's nothing, to me, nicer than driving down at night when that building on Summer Street is all lit up, mm -hmm. that old building <laughs> that they took down block by block yep. and oh, reconstructed. Really. And, and I spoke about this before. Um, we actually did a tour at Consigli Construction for people that had gone there for elementary school. Mm -hmm. It was jammed. People walked around the building and said, oh, what, this is where I went to second yeah. grade. Yeah. This is exactly what you've done, the same thing. These may be apartments for over 55, um, but you've done the same thing. People are going to be able to not only walk by and say, geez, that's where I went to high school. They're going to have fond memories of it. So you've, 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 you've done some new stuff on this end of it, but the main structure, you've kept the nostalgia there for the people of this community. So I commend you for that. I really, really do. And uh, it's just, I never expected anything like this. This is over the top. It really is. And, uh, and again, it's, it's about bringing people to downtown. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about bringing people to the downtown area. And uh, we need to do that. And you're right, one building at a time. It's not going to happen overnight. One building at a time. But we can do it. We can all work together and we can do it. So, again, just thank you. Beautiful job. Thank you, Mike. Um, well, I don't know if there's any more questions or comments for the, for the gentleman. I, um, I, I think that we obviously, oh, do you have another yeah. question? I just wanted to um, say what a great rendition. It gives somebody like myself who can't look at 2D plans and, <laughs> you know, overviews and, and see the segmentation. But... I, I am also impressed that you're solving another issue. You're not looking just to put, you know, the residential uh, over 55, but you've solved it by committing uh, an incredible amount of space to 62 spaces, including green space. Mm -hmm. So aesthetically, you're trying to make it pleasing. You're also not trying to burden the neighbors or the other areas where some other buildings are going to have a challenge. They need to solve this problem in the way that you have here. But I want to go over the the proposal um, is really one that was written in a way to try to encourage something unique. Mm -hmm. Encourage reuse if possible. And if not, by right, as the, uh, as the owner of that property, you if town meeting doesn't meet, meet the two-thirds threshold, by right, what are you allowed to do? What's allowed to go there on that uh, property today? A commercial building. Commercial. Okay. With parking, it's what I showed you in the RFP. It's about 20, 20 to 22,000 square feet. 
with the parking, two-story building. All right. And by right, that would mean that you have the ability to take down and need to actually take down the old building. The old building would have to go. Would have to go yeah. in order to meet the current zoning requirements Correct. if this zone, if this isn't rezoned. Right. Um, so um, it's something that town meeting ought to be mindful of if their desire is the same as my desire to try to, and your desire, frankly, to try to salvage that, that building. Um, and preserve it where people went to school. If we can do that, the town meeting is so inclined as our legislative body. Uh, Two-thirds is a high threshold, but I think you might be able to get that done given what you're showing here. So that's important for folks to know that, you know, builders can't sit on properties forever waiting for towns to rezone, and I appreciate your your action and your working with the town and town planner uh, to move on something that will allow you to preserve it rather than have to knock it down okay yeah and I do think Bill if that's the toughest message to probably get out there is you know we're, we're I'm a builder I'm a developer there are certain buildings that are not worth saving right and there are certain buildings that you should try do this to and it's based on the bones of the building where it's situated how it you know how can you do a connection to a building this one's a perfect building to try to recover to this in my you know my opinion and to Mike's point I didn't illustrate it yet but I absolutely will have the wall washing lights and you know I want it to be a building that when people from other towns drive in say wow what a great looking building that is I mean that's that's my intention thank you I think it shows a cooperative effort on the part of your board and uh, private industry to uh, really start putting some signature pieces of property on Main Street in Milford, which has long had signature pieces of property. We forgot about them. You're right. And, uh, we, you know, we talk about the speed at which we're going to be able to do things. And we talk about one building at a time. But, you know, within my lifetime, uh, Main Street was a very vibrant uh, Main Street. And its challenges and its fights against malls and Internet sales uh, have been significant not unlike many you know main streets across the country so this didn't happen in a day the recovery is not going to happen in a day but with signature pieces like this it may just be the impetus to get other developers looking at what's possible as well well i just don't want it to get lost either that again and i think you touched on it bill and we've all touched on it and you know, this has been something when main street comes up that has been talked about for again a long time too long and now we're making decisions we're moving quickly we are we're, we're putting our money at where our mouth is now with that you get judged one way or the other but when especially Kevin and I've said this to you many times the part that that just puts a whole wraps a whole red bow around this is you're a Milford guy mm -hmm. again you could run your business wherever you wanted you chose to come here you you raise your family here. You drive down the same streets we do. You sit at the same red lights we do, stuck in the same traffic we do, looking at either a beautiful piece of property or an eyesore as well. Mm -hmm. So you're experiencing exactly what we are. So the fact that in the end, this is going to someone local who chooses to live here and raise their family here, and then you come and, again, all of your other buildings look great, and this just far surpasses anything that, you know, in in my unprofessional mind in this business could even think of and uh, again the fact that this all is going to come down to a conversation on town meeting floor really about now folks because again for some of us we've experienced these floor fights over this building for 20 years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now it's we still have a chance to save the building or we don't that's where the strategy finally comes together and honestly I think you guys are going to do very well I think our town meeting, I mean, our town meeting members are super knowledgeable. They're as involved as you can get. And, I mean, before you get there, they're going to know what's, what's on the line here. Yeah. And uh, I just, I congratulate you again. At some point, I, I hope the board makes a decision tonight um, on the bid, and you guys can. Uh, I was going to say, Mr. Chairman, you bring that rendering to town meeting, the three of us will sell it. <laughs> Trust me. We may ask you. <laughs> <laughs> 
So do we want to take on the bid and then we can talk about the article or we can talk about the article at some other point or whatever we need to talk about at this point? I don't need, think you need to talk about the article tonight, but a, a motion to accept the bid from Lobus Corporation at the price of $115,000, uh, I think, would be the motion you would make. Um, if that is uh, the board's pleasure and if the board passes it, then um, we have a purchase and sale agreement that would be signed within 30 days and then we could work on a convenient closing date um, okay. at that point. It's the pleasure of the board. Rick, um, if you might, just um, as the Chief Procurement Officer, can you just give me some background as to, you know, uh, and for the folks watching, I've been here every meeting, so I've watched <laughs> sure. it evolve, but I sure. want to just uh, go through the process that we went through for the RFP. Yeah, if the board remembers prior to that, uh, town meeting did approve an article authorizing an RFP for the sale or the lease of the building uh, will be under the direction of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, that was passed at town meeting. An RFP was prepared. Um, it was published not only in the Central Register but twice in the um, Milford Daily News. It was online also on our website. We had a number of individuals and or corporations or companies actually pull the bid but we only received one proposal, and that was the proposal from Lobus Corporation. Uh, I reviewed the requirements of the bid, as did town council. All of the requirements were met by uh, Mr. Lobus through his corporation. Um, so all of the relevant elements were there, including the, the bid deposit and, and et cetera. So uh, everything was um, done as it needed to be done, and, and we need to have it done. So um, that's why we're here tonight. So. The board's prerogative now is to either accept the bid or not to. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to accept the bid from uh, uh, Lobster Corporation uh, for the amount of $115,000. Um, Lobster Building Corp, I want to be very specific, uh, and the amount of $115,000 and consistent with the RFP that we sent out, there are sub, uh, several proposals and he is already acting on them so I'm happy to to do that and make that motion and hey, mr. chairman if I may before Kevin I'd like to again just say thank you beautiful beautiful rendering and I, I'm sure it will come out that that nice and I will second that motion mr. chairman no and I'll also vote in favor and make that unanimous um, and again thank you gentlemen thank this you. is uh, this is a this is a big turning point for us and uh, I'm glad to partner with you Kevin yeah. thank you Looking forward to it. Hopefully, you can sense that. And uh, we'll continue to work with uh, your town planner and uh, your town administrator and town council, so that there will be a written article to be placed on the warrant, so that certainly within the timeline that you get your warrant ready. And let us know if there are any barriers or uh, speed bumps in the way, and we'll be certainly. glad to help. Certainly will. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate your time tonight. Nice, Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bad, you can't move in. <laughs> <laughs> Bill and I can. You did that to the folks. No, I still got a, a few years. You can down this day, this end also. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not Gene. Ladies, do one of you want? Oh, 42, okay, 43, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I'm off by a year. <laughs> right. Uh, next agenda item is the town administrator's report. As we go backwards, Rick. Yes. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just three items tonight. Um, we can wait a couple minutes. Gonna wait one second. Yeah. Um, I just want to update the board on the uh, town council search. Uh, we received uh, 11 letters of intent and resumes, mostly from individuals, a couple from law firms interested in the position. Uh, these have been forwarded to attorneys Laura Mann and Jed Nosel. Um, I spoke with Laura today and had some email correspondence with Jed. They will be reviewing the applications this week. They have set up uh, tentative dates next week to interview um, uh, candidates that they feel meet the qualifications in the job description and that would be um, fit to be presented to this board for your um, 
uh, interview. They hope to have uh, final candidates again interviewed next week, and they should have final candidates, at least three, to be interviewed by this board at your next meeting on Monday, March 26th. That, again, is a tentative timeline. Um, they believe they can make that, but obviously that could be subject to potential in individuals being interviewed, not being available, schedules uh, of both Jed and and Laura, Good but uh, in speaking with both of them today, um, I think they understand the task in front of them, and, and I just want to thank them publicly for uh, taking on this task to help us screen uh, individuals for, you know, as you guys know, a very crucial position uh, here in town. So uh, I will be following up with them by the end of the week, and I will report to the board once uh, final interviews are set. Um, I have been informed by State Representative Murray and Senator Fatman that Governor Baker has signed the bills regarding the water company. There were two bills, one to allow the transfer of assets upon the uh, purchase, and the second would allow the town to bond over a 40-year period to help uh, pay for that purchase. Um, I want to thank Senator Fatman and Representative Murray for their efforts in assisting in the passage of these two bills. And then finally, uh, Mr. Chairman, we did receive from Governor Baker's uh, office our Chapter 90 local transportation aid funding for fiscal year uh, 2019. We've been informed that the total funding will be $200 million statewide, pending obviously final legislative approval. The apportionment for Milford will be approximately $821,881. So that's all I have tonight, Mr. Chairman. Okay, great. Yeah. Bill, any questions? No, Over. just uh, for the benefit of the folks that are listening at home, that those monies that uh, Rick was just speaking about are what go towards the resurfacing of our roads and improvement of our roads and intersections. So that's great news. Mike? No, Mr. Chairman, I'm all set. Thank all right. you. Rick, um, I had a question. I received a call, and I think you folks and the building department have handled it, but can I get or can you tell me now what you know, and then can I get a status update on 42 Main Street? which is, again, we were here talking about Middle School East on this side of the road, but um, I got a couple of calls from yes, some I, neighbors on 42 Main Street. And I think I can update. I think you were spotted there, according to one of my sources. So Yeah, I, I actually you know uh, had firsthand. the opportunity because I hadn't walked a building in a while. Okay. Um, so I did walk it along with police, fire, inspections, assessors, and Board of Health. Uh, oh, okay. So we did walk all, I believe, I want to say there are 13 units. Um, each of the uh, boards will be preparing a report. I have two of the reports. I'm waiting on a third. Once I have those reports, I will uh, obviously forward them to the board. Um, <coughs> there were some violations noted um, <clears throat> by each of the departments, Board of Health Inspections uh, and Assessors. Um, the owner of the property also walked the building. He was there with us, so a lot right. of them were pointed out to him directly. Um, and um, I know the Board of Health and Inspections will be uh, following up to see if their violations are corrected. Um, and it will be recurring, I think, with inspections. The owner has been um, willing to let us in, did let us in. Um, so I want to thank all of them and police and fire for their assistance. There were some fire vi violations also, so they're issuing a report also. So this was done, I think, the last week or the week before. Okay. So that's where we're at um, there. Okay. And it was brought to my attention that some of the violations at 42 Main Street go back to some of them as 2001. So I'd like a full report on that so we can talk about that because sure. I just want to make sure, one, that's accurate information that I'm getting. I yeah. believe it is. But I also want to make sure that, you know. Yeah, there's a question on a couple of the so-called units. Yeah, as to whether or not they were. I mean, I'm, you, correct. I understand you being diplomatic, yes. but I appreciate that. But I, I just, we need to know the history because sure. it's 2018. Yeah. And the violations were issued in 2001. I mean, that's even a few bi a building commissioners ago. Okay. So. Okay. All right, so I don't know how you want to present that to us, but I think that's something, gentlemen, that, you know, as these things continue to get tackled on, if there's a pattern or if there's a history, especially uh, right, a 16-year one or 17-year right. one, um, we need an explanation. Right. Because that actually super I mean, that supersedes all of us that are here now. Right. So I'm trying not to be frustrated, but this is the stuff that, again, when people are calling and repeatedly saying that this is stuff taking place, and again, especially when we can look out this window and see the property, I think uh, we need to know what's going on. Mm -hmm.
next is new business. Um, if I might, if I might, Mr. Oh, Chairman, sure. I'm sorry to interrupt. We did add the one add-on as an old business on the town meeting articles. If you'd like oh, to. Yeah. Oh yeah, gentlemen. Two. I apologize. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, no. This was this is really good. Rick uh, uh, contacted me uh, later this afternoon, and I asked him if uh, he asked me, and I said please put it into our packets. It's uh, Rick. I don't know if you want to explain it, but it's really uh, these seven articles that were. Yeah, I think Reno Deluzio and his committee had made some recommendations. Uh, he had discussed them with Town Council Moody. This is one that this board can approve. That is the combining of several of the annual recurring articles. For example the ability of the selectmen to issue five-year contracts, the ability of the treasurer to do deeds in lieu of foreclosure. So but what it would do is have one article and presenting these types of articles, which I think there are seven listed here, as one article. So we would be looking for this board to vote to approve that. Okay. Town Council is in the process of preparing a warrant, and then he'll prepare it accordingly. Hey, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm happy to try a lot of things. Reno DeLucio is former town planner. Smart guy, he's helped us on uh, trails. Uh, that committee has worked really hard. So, you know, some of this is a work in progress. And my suggestion is let's look at some of these recommendations, try some of them out, see how it works. And this one really is almost pro forma in the sense that there are things that we, we know from history receive uh, unanimous support uh, from the town. And uh, they're always allowed to challenge any aspect of it. So it doesn't change whether somebody can challenge right. it. They can it pull really, one out if they'd like. Yeah, yeah, it just really says how we bundle it. So I'd be in favor of doing this, and I'd uh, put a motion forward uh, to uh, combine into one article uh, the things that Jerry has outlined here as a recommendation and consistent with Reno DeLuso and that, uh, that committee's recommendation. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I would agree with Selectman Buckley. I think anything that Reno Deluzio is involved in and his committees are involved in is, is always very well done. Um, and I, I would feel very comfortable seconding that motion as well. All right, great. Thank you. Um, I'll also vote in favor and make that unanimous. Thank you. You can go from there. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Next agenda item is Article 3 recommendation. Uh, this is giving all of the full time, which is uh, to the town clerk and the highway surveyor, uh, 2%, a recommendation of a 2% increase at town meeting, and all of the part time elected, 2% uh, as well. Move, Mr. Chairman, to support that uh, Article 3 recommendation. Which is well within guidelines. I would second that. Yes, the personnel yes. board is recommending yes. 2%. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, okay. I, I don't know where that is, so well, I guess we'll get to it. There you go. There it is. Okay. Got it. Fireworks. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, we go back to the recommendation for fireworks. Uh, Rick? Yeah, we put out the bid as we do uh, each year. Uh, interestingly enough, only this year, one there was only one bidder. It's the same company that did the fireworks last year. Uh, I think the bid is $500 more than it was last year, so I would recommend the board accept the bid in the amount of $17,000 from Atlas Pyrovision Entertainment Group, Inc., out of uh, Jaffrey, New Hampshire. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept uh, the town administrator's recommendation to move forward on the fireworks with the bid that uh, was submitted. Second that, Mr. Chairman. And I'll also vote in favor and make that unanimous, and considering we're going to have a parade, we should, I think That's we right. should <laughs> fight over fireworks. Have our fireworks. Uh, next is a request from the Milford Youth Commission for a waiver of permit fees. Uh, dear Town Administrator and Board of Selectmen, I'm writing to you on behalf of the Milford Youth Commission to inform the Board <coughs> of the request to waive the permitting fees for the following two companies and projects. One is Custom Alarm Service Incorporated for the installation of alarm surveillance and intercom systems. Two, to Gymnasium Design Co. for the installation of a slope fold curtain in the gymnasium and to All Temp Systems Mechanical Inc. for donating the plumbing work necessary for a washer and a dryer. In the basement of the Youth Center, All Temp is donating this entire job, quoted at $2,050. And to Braza and Mancini for their electrical work with the washer and dryer. I'll move, Mr. Chairman. I'd second that, Mr. Chairman, as well. I'll also vote in favor and make that unanimous. Um, Rick, can we also send a letter to All Temp and to Braza and Mancini for their donation. Yes. I'm sure the Youth Center will yes. as well, but I'd yep. like our yep. board to do that as well. 
Next, we have three requests for one-day licenses. The first one's from the Milford Performing Arts Center at 150 Main Street. Carol Devendorf asks for this every year. Uh, it's for March 9th, which are, I guess, a rain date of the 10th, uh, from 6.30 to 11, and it's for wine and malt only. Move, Mr. Chairman. Second, Mr. Chairman. I'll also vote in favor and make that unanimous. Second is for St. Mary of the Assumption Church, 17 Winter Street in Milford, for their St. Patrick's celebration. Uh, Mar that's March 10th as well. And this is wine and malt only. Move, Mr. Chairman. Second, Mr. Chairman. Also vote in favor and make that unanimous. And we have one from Sacred Heart Parish. It's the Sacred Heart Women's Club for their annual dinner dance. And that is April 7th in the parish hall from 6 to 11. And this is for wine and malt only. Move, Mr. Chairman. Second, Mr. Chairman. Also vote in favor and make that unanimous. Next, uh, well, I'm sorry, any, any additional new business? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, bring up an item of new business. It's not new to the to the to the country, and it's not new to uh, schools across the the, the nation. But um, what I would like to do is recommend that um, we look at uh, we look towards the chief of police to bring in his recommendations uh, for the upcoming budget um, for how we might do a better job than might have been done in other schools across the country when uh, some of these massacres are, are happening. I don't want to be one of those communities uh, interviewed by news someday talking about how we never thought it would happen here. Communities across the country have learned it does happen. So specifically what I'm talking about is the five building, school building safety, the safety of the kids. What I want is to make sure that whatever we do and whatever we can do is being done um, beyond uh, some of the great work that's being done in terms of active, active shooter drills and all of that. But what I'm looking to do is create an environment where we know and the community knows that our kids are off limits. And that, that it not be, that, that our buildings not be the safest in the Commonwealth, but the safest on the planet. Our kids have to be off limits. And we know that we have an able and capable police department that have given the right tools and right opportunities. We can have officers in each of the buildings. And I think uh, uh, boards of selectmen, city councils across uh, the Commonwealth should be talking about this. If we're not, I would feel negligent in my responsibilities as a leader of this community if we didn't talk about it. Um, so that's my recommendation that we uh, engage with the chief of police to see what opportunities there are. And I'm not talking about, I don't want to get into the tactics here because the tactics aren't necessarily mine to develop there. We have capable public safety mm -hmm. officers, um, but um, how to bring these buildings, uh, how to staff the buildings with police officers such that our engagement time is shorter than it might otherwise be if the chief were given more tools. and. Um, um, also to look at what we can do over time to improve and prevent uh, incidents from happening. There may be things we can do with our cameras, there may be things we can do with the glass, there may be a host of things we can do. And I am not talking about arming teachers with weapons. What I'm talking about is letting the teachers teach and putting armed professionals in our buildings so that, the, that our, our response times are short and that uh, uh, the people who are trained to do this every day, and most of them are former veterans as well, or trained in military, uh, know how to react and know how to stop people who would try to bring our children harm. Well, Bill, I really appreciate you bringing that. That was actually a, a note up here for me to uh, as bring up as well under new business. Um, and if, if you folks are all right with it, I think we should bring the chief in um, at our next meeting. Um, or at least have him present again much like Bill said is there anything he's going without if it's something he would he would do if he had the additional resources but you know the FinCom says two and a half percent this is one where we make the exception we listen to what they need if there if there's resources that they additional resources that they need to either get additional bodies or additional equipment or additional tools I think this is the time to have the conversation I, I appreciate you bringing that up um, Mike, I know you're still on the school committee for, for a little while longer. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, we can have a, if, if either a serious dialogue or at least get his feedback on if 
if our, if resources were you know, infinite, this is what I would this is what I would want. Well, it's a serious problem. Look at what just happened in the library. Yeah. You know, young girls sitting there just reading, and some unfortunate person with you know an illness, and uh, she lost her life. Um, you know, as a school committee member, I think um, we do a good job. I should say the police department does a good job, but there's always room for improvement. But one of the things, just using the high school as an example, I forget what the number is, but I want to say the high school has 89 <laughs> exterior doors, and we have two people all day long. You can call them hall monitors, whatever you want, but once school is in session and locked down, they're literally walking around all day, banging to make sure the doors are locked, to you know, selectman Buckley's point. Somebody goes out and says, geez, I'm just going to run off to my car for a second. Put something in the doorway. There's an entrance, in. you know. And so, yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think the chief would be more than willing to come in and sit with us sure. and go over, you know, what he's doing and and what he thinks are areas that you know he may want to improve and he needs mm -hmm. our help and you know finances to do that. So and yeah, I think, and I think that's budget. where the role is because you mentioned tactics. I don't expect yeah. him to come, nor do I want him to come and and talk about things that he shouldn't be talking about right. or, or, or isn't comfortable talking about. We certainly don't need to know his master plan and how his staff reacts right. um, to emergencies um, at schools or anywhere else. However, I think it's just, it's imperative and the responsibility is on us mm -hmm. to make sure that we're giving him all the resources he needs. And it should be a, a, a pretty encompassing report that, uh, that we're looking for, it allows us to understand so that we can uh, understand uh, what the officers will be doing, um, both when school is in session and not in session right because it's 180 days out of the year and then there's other things right so you know how might those officers be uh, aligned and resourced but I want to be clear we're talking about the five school buildings uh, for starters okay. Mike anything else I'm good mr. chairman thank okay you. thank you Bill thank you um, if there did you have any additional new business or are you okay Mike Actually, I would just w wanted to add one thing, and I think also it's important, not only with the police, is with the fire. Um, as we all know, the fire department uh, makes uh, routine uh, trips to the schools for uh, fire drills. Mm -hmm. And I think when the fire department makes a recommendation that, um, and I remember years past, particularly the Woodland School, you know, there's boxes and desks that are in, you know, tucked away in places and they say these really shouldn't be here those are also safety things that need to be addressed as well if the fire department makes a recommendation you got to get it handled you got to get it out of there you know and no we, have a, we have a responsibility there as well next agenda item is correspondence first order of business is we received a letter of resignation from Thomas Morelli Dear members of the board, I'd like to inform you that I'm resigning from my appointment as building inspector for the town of Milford, effective February 23rd, 2018. Thank you very much for the opportunities for professional and personal development that you have provided me during the past few months. I've enjoyed working for the agency and appreciate the support provided to me during my time with the town. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know. Sincerely, Thomas J. Morelli. For a motion to accept. Move, Mr. Chairman. I would second with regret. That. And I'll also vote in favor and make that unanimous. No, Tommy is a, is a gentleman. Good guy. Good, good guy. Uh, right. Second is from the Milford Police Association, a notice to begin contract negotiations. It's from Robert Ticino, president of the Milford Police Association. Gentlemen, the Milford Police Association Local 218 is requesting a forum to start contract negotiations as our current contract expires on June 30th, 2018. If possible, our negotiation committee would appreciate an audience with the Honorable Board of Selectmen. I look forward to meeting with the board to discuss the upcoming contract. And we'll get together and we'll schedule that. Also, we have a letter of resignation from Ernest Patinari. Dear Mr. Kincaid, Buckley, and Walsh, please accept this letter as my res resignation from the position of Special Assistant <coughs> to the Town Council, Contracts Negotiator, effective April 1, 2018. As you know, I am no longer engaged in the full-time practice of law, and I'm not able to continue to dedicate the time and effort which the position demands. I extend my sincere appreciation to all of you and to attorneys Richard Villani and Jerry Moody and the town's other elected and appointed officials who have helped me make my work as the town's negotiator memorable and enjoyable. Thank you, very truly yours, Ernest P. Petinari. 
And is there a motion to accept that resignation? Moved. Uh, you know, it's uh, just a point of note that uh, uh, Ernie served the town well in helping with negotiations as uh, associate counsel uh, for, nego for those negotiations. And it's just, it's too bad that both he and Jerry are on the back ends of their careers uh, looking to do other things, and um, th those resignations come nearly back to back. Um, I know that they didn't plan that, and I know that uh, uh, we'll work as hard as we can with outside agencies and council to bridge any gaps. And we've already talked about the schedule to uh, close on hiring a full time council, but now we have an associate council uh, to bring on, and uh, we should be talking about how to close that gap as quickly as possible. Yep. So um, uh, I'm not sure how um, this position was filled. It was filled long before I came on. Yeah. It's been there forever. Yeah. So, um, you know, maybe there's something we put in the local paper, look for local council, <coughs> um, and uh, maybe you can get us a draft of a recommendation for a uh, job description and salary or stipend that uh, how we've been funding it in the past. There's got to be, you know, a sharp local attorney who probably wants to participate in uh, local government in addition to the, their law practice, as, as Ernie has for years. No, and I think that uh, that's a, a really good point, especially if we end up, if the chosen candidate, if we do have a candidate um, and have candidates to interview on March 26th, um, if we do hire someone who's out of town, we are no longer going to have the luxury that we had with Jerry Moody, who, would, if he wasn't in the building, would be at home watching our meetings and be here in five minutes when we made a motion to adjourn. So, again, if we hire someone, um, which I imagine we would possibly outside of our area, considering mm -hmm. I'm sure we have applicants from, from all over the place. Very possible. That it's possible that they're out of town and, you know, night work becomes... Um, a whole different ball game, so that's sure. going to have to be a factor too. Sure. So, an assistant, uh, whatever this position is named, I always call it an associate council. council, but I'm not sure what it is. Uh, I think it's labor council, but labor council, yeah, because that's strictly what Ernie did. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure. I'll check on that. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, so, you did you make a motion, Bill, to accept? Yes, I did. I okay. believe. And if I could, Mr. Chairman, you know. Um, Attorney Patinari is uh, not only is he a Milfordian, um, mm -hmm. he's uh, very talented. He's a good person. Our children grow up together. Uh, he's a good friend. Um, and to Selectman Buckley's point, it's it's to lose both your main town council and your associate town council at the same time. We get some big shoes to fill. Uh, no question. And uh, I'd like to personally thank uh, Ernie for his years of service to this community. Absolutely. Um, he's done a great job. And uh, I know he loves this community, and uh, it would be a, it's going to be a big loss. Mm -hmm. And I wish him the best. I know that he uh, he calls it the backside of his career. <laughs> Another uh, way of saying getting closer to retirement. But uh, I, you know, I think the three of us wish him the best. Want to sure. say thank you to sure. him, and uh, and uh, thank you very very much. Okay. No, and if we can get a letter uh, drafted for sure. Ernie as well, I yep. think the three of us would would like to sign that. So that was moved, seconded. Second. And I'll vote in favor and make that unanimous. All right. Uh, any other correspondence? No, that's it, no. Mr. Chairman. Okay. I'm good. All, All right. right. I'll move to adjourn. Yeah, we do not have an executive session. I'll second. And I will vote in favor and make that unanimous. Have a good night, everyone.